Hello, and welcome to another Open Aperture Photography Podcast. My name is Mike Malloy. On this episode, um, I want to talk about five ideas that you can have for taking some different types of photography. There's quite a bit of similarity in a lot of photography I look at online these days, and um, I do find some shots get a little bit samey. Um, for example, a guy standing in a field with a torch on his head looking up at the sky and you can see the Milky Way above. Um, I've seen that hundreds of times. Um, I don't see the value in recreating that. I know it's a good idea to have maybe certain shots in your portfolio, but to have the same shot that everyone else is doing in the same location doesn't really excite me. I mean, I've been to the Lone Tree in uh, Limpadan and I've had a go at photographing it when there's not six other people also trying to photograph it. Uh, that day wasn't particularly great from what I remember weather-wise, so it, it didn't come out and it's not in my portfolio as a, as a shot. So I thought I'd come up with a couple of ideas, or five ideas in this case that you could maybe look at some new types of shots or try and approach some shots differently. The first one I want to talk about is documenting everyday moments. For example, you could have a pair of sunglasses on a table with some sunlight passing through them. You could have a the steam from a coffee cup, something like that. Um, these kind of ideas will probably expand your thinking a little bit, hopefully. Um, and using things like shallow depth of field, you can create a nice look, a little bokeh look, a bokeh look. The time of year can also be important as well. The light that we all like to have is different in different types of year. Summertime is difficult with light because daytimes are just way too harsh you can't really do anything and it's it's almost like a photography if you're maybe a landscape photographer photography you can't do during the daylight you know sunrise sunset fabulous there's you know if you don't mind getting up at 4:30 uh, in the middle of the lake district then fab but during the day there's not an awful lot else you could do because the light is just too harsh uh, unless you get an overcast day or something with you know, a bit more cloud. So looking at ways you could do more with photography during the daytime, you could do ideas like the ones I've just mentioned and find objects at home and put them in interesting situations and use natural light that's coming through your window to give a little bit more of a a different feel, uh, you know, different type of, you could practice different types of shots doing different aperture settings and so on that way. Golden hour is still quite a good time of day to play with these kind of shots because you can have long shadows included in the shot. So give it a try, look around your house or where you are and just see whether there are any objects that might look interesting with some shadow reflection on a wooden table those kind of things I'm just trying to experiment a little bit more the second one I wanted to talk about was minimalism so if you're wandering around the streets with your camera, there's lots and lots of opportunities that you could find, shapes on buildings and so on, that you could create a minimalist photograph. Where I live in Milton Keynes, there is um, the, the train station. If any of you are familiar with, with the train station, it's a, um, a sort of square rectangular shaped building with lots and lots of identical mirrored glass panelling that runs in a um, 
three sides to a square if you like and it, in, it in, encloses the, the station square so I was just wandering along there one day and I just took a couple of pictures of the architecture without trying to have anything else in the background so I'm just getting this geometric rectangular shape when I got the image back into Lightroom the section where it defaults to the camera type and lens that the uh, photograph has been used with I decided to change those and see what what different perspectives that would give me just out, just out of curiosity basically so I changed it to the DJI which is the setting for the drone cameras which um, strangely gave me this kind of semi-circle skewed image effect and, and there's a slider there about how much you can move that around and, and, and play with the bending of the picture so if you have a look on my website and have a look at the picture you'll see what I mean it gave me a new perspective and it, it's a minimalist photograph using a, a regular structure that's there that people look at every day and I got a, a unique photograph from it which I haven't seen anyone else do so give minimalism a try and just see what you can come up with maybe a little bit more abstract shot than, you, than you're used to it's worth a go there's plenty of different lines and curves and doorways windows all those kinds of things that you could put into an abstract form and give it that minimalist look the third one I want to talk about is capturing waves so if you're down at the seaside obviously <laughs> or else you wouldn't get many waves many other places the the spray and the uh, foam and all of the kind of chaos that goes on in water can give you a really really interesting look for your shot now I must put a little um, caveat here or a warning in uh, sea salt and spray and your camera they're not gonna be very good friends so just be careful when you're down at the beach and try not to get it too wet or to get too much spray on you but if you get down there and you can get near some rocks and there's a bit of a bit of wind going on you'll get a little bit of chaos and, and white water going on and if you can get right down into the level of the the water you could get some interesting shots through the water and the and the splash and, and the bubbles and what have you coming up through the shot so give it a try try with different cap aperture settings different focal points if you're on manual focus try and focus further away nearer in see what you can get i'm sure you'll come up with a good result The fourth one is trying to create an abstract image. Now this is something that I'm really into in photography. I like to make the viewer look at a photograph and go, wow, what is that? That's a real thing. It's not a vector. It's not something that I've drawn on a, a bit of software. That's an actual photograph. And that's what I really, really like about photography is you can make people just go, wow, okay that's something that I've never seen before what is it so again in nature in buildings in objects there's all kinds of ways of making people look at something and go, just go wow brilliant really good photograph for me it started out years ago when I used to have a little Sony cyber shot and I used to take pictures of um, like wine glasses that had you know if you had cold wine in them and you, you got the little condensation formed on the side of the glass you could peer through the glass and then the stem had a, a circular quality through the, the condensation various things like that I'd, I'd look at objects and just go right okay let's let's take a close-up of that and, and try and get some abstract image from it some were great some were brilliant I've still got all the photographs but they're um, because they were only sort of three megapixel cameras and in those days they're not really worth 
um, putting anywhere online because they're just not good enough pictures that were, would be worth showing. So if you've got a macro lens or something like that, you don't necessarily have to have a macro lens. Close up objects or even buildings with a long lens that you shot from a distance, your long lens allows you to get in close. If you can get down to, to I mean my long lens is, is 75 to 300 and it's, it's an f4. And if you can go in the right place, you can get a, a shot that's far away but in good detail and, and you get an, an abstract shape from something. But I'd say a macro lens, it'd, it'd be quite interesting to take things, swirls, squares, all kinds of things, just experiment with it and see how you get on. So the fifth and final one I want to talk about is working in the midday sun and taking photographs when there is good shadow. So earlier I mentioned that sunrise, sunset, brilliant times if you're a landscape photographer. During the day you can't really take great photographs, you're just going to take holiday snaps really. Geometric shapes and things like that that cast shadow will have an interesting background that matches the geometric shape. So this can also be viewed as abstract or minimalism but try and be creative with something that you've got an object maybe a tennis racket that's got a shadow of another tennis racket or the stems of some roses that cast a shadow could be a doorway could be a window have a look around and see whether there's anything that you can use the shadow specifically in the composition and as the sun moves around the t through the day the shadow will change so if you can get your exposure correct, there's no reason why you can't take a really good photograph using shadows. Okay guys, thanks very much for listening. My website is mikemalloy.photography. You can follow me on Twitter at Mike Malloy Photo. And Instagram, again, is mikemalloy.photography. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks very much for listening. Bye.